The Miami Dolphins' nearly month-long search for a new head coach apparently is on the cusp of coming to a conclusion. And unless there is an unexpected breakdown in contract negotiations or something else happens like what we saw in Jacksonville with Byron Leftwich, all signs point to San Francisco 49ers offensive coordinator Mike McDaniel being the guy. Now, there's one thing I want to clear up right off the bat that a lot of Dolphin fans seem to be making a mistake of. It is McDaniel, not McDaniels. A lot of people are putting an S at the end. McDaniels is the new head coach of the Raiders. McDaniels was the offensive coordinator for a long time for the Patriots. McDaniels was once upon a time the head coach of the Broncos who orchestrated the draft of Tim Tebow. McDaniels was coach of the Indianapolis Colts shorter than uh, I had some blind dates that didn't go well. It's McDaniel. Now let's talk about Mike McDaniel here. By all accounts and purposes, this guy is widely regarded across the league as a star on the rise. This guy has been called a savant. He's been called a genius. Some people think that he will be the prize of the Mike Shanahan coaching tree. Now, mind you, Shanahan has quietly put together one hell of a tree. To say that he's going to be the prize of it, we're talking McDaniel here, that's foretelling because we all see what Kyle Shanahan's doing in San Francisco. And oh, by the way, there's some kid in Los Angeles named McVay who has turned the NFL on its ear and is getting ready to coach in his second Super Bowl in four seasons. Yet Mike McDaniel may be the best of them all. He's been called a savant. He's been called a genius. He's been called a person who revolutionizes offenses. What I can tell you is he's taken a number of different quarterbacks and brought out the absolute best in them. Some have gone on to greater career success. Some, unfortunately, have not. But McDaniel has brought out the absolute best in all of them. He's taken wide receivers and made them better. In the season, he had him under them hel- under his helm. Again, some of them have gone on to greater career success. Unfortunately, some have not, but by no fault of McDaniel. And we all saw what he's done with running backs, especially in San Francisco. We're talking Rasheem Mosert. We're talking um, Elijah Mitchell. This guy is taking not exactly cream of the crop talent and making them look elite. What's he going to do with elite talent? And he's already just completely wowed the Dolphins in every interview he's had. Talking about wanting to make the offense even more up-tempo. And I know some idiot Dolphin fans don't understand what that means. Oh, oh, we ran the RPO. It can't go any faster than that. Trust me, it can. And if you don't understand it, I'm not going to explain it to you. It's already been broken down in mass on Twitter. Look it up. This guy has a ton of upside, a ton of upside. And I think he is smart enough to put together a good coaching staff. That is nine-tenths of the battle right there. You could be the smartest coach in the room. If you don't put together a coaching staff, it's it's going to fall apart. Ask Brian Flores. But I think this man is well-connected enough, he's humble enough, and he's smart enough to surround himself with people that are going to keep him in place, who are going to build that side of the ball on offense, on defense, on the offensive line, etc. He's going to surround himself with the right people. I have faith. Now, let me kill off some of these dumb shit misconceptions that we're seeing online that are pure and unadulterated lazy arguments. There's no other way of putting it. These arguments have no merit to them. It's just people being lazy because they, they want to bitch for the sake of bitching. The, the biggest one I cannot stand, and it's not just rubes, and ham and eggers that want to bitch for the sake of bitching. you got blue check marks and media members making this one. It's, he's not a leader of men. Under what concept do you make that argument? Because he doesn't look the part? Because he's not a, a, a chiseled physique? And he doesn't look like he chews nails? Have you seen Andy Reid? Okay, Andy Reid looks like the guy that's going to be sitting at the sports bar drinking his fifth beer, okay, while he eats a hamburger. Who gives a fuck what he looks like? Like, are we that stupid nowadays? I don't care if the guy looks like Pee Wee fucking Herman. Really? How's he going to put together a coaching staff? If you look at his track record in the NFL as a coordinator, 
I'm satisfied enough. I don't give a damn what the guy looks like. When I look for a coach, I don't look at what his photo appears to be. And I don't look at his photo and say, well, he's not a leader of men. Get the fuck out of here with this stupidity. Um, let's see, the other argument, I have concerns about he doesn't call enough plays in San Francisco under Kyle Shanahan. You know, Shanahan, Shanahan does have his own hands on that offense. That's a valid argument. That's probably the least lazy of these. But you ask Shanahan, you ask anybody in the 49er organization, and they will tell you this guy has a hell of a lot more say than people realize. A hell of a lot more say. And it's not like the 49ers were his first stop on the on the packing order, weren't his first stop in this journey that's led up to this point. He's had plenty of time to call offenses, so this ain't his first rodeo. Um, let's see some other arguments. Oh, here's another one that absolutely is just fucking stupid. Comparing him to Cam Cameron, specifically Joe Philbin and Adam Gase. Okay. Lazy. L-A-Z-Y. Three different animals. I will repeat this a thousand times. Adam Gase gained his reputation in 2014, working with Peyton Manning. If you don't see the difference between working with Peyton Manning in 2014, who, by the way, Peyton Manning was pretty much his own offensive coordinator out there. Peyton Manning in 2014 was already well-established as one of the greatest players in NFL history. And notice I didn't just say quarterback there. And what Mike McDaniel has done with Jimmy Garoppolo, with Pierre Garçon, uh, with, with Andrew Hawkins, uh, with, with Elijah Mitchell, with Rasheem Bosert, the list goes on and on. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I really don't. Joe Philbin, that's another name that goes thrown out there. Joe Philbin basically set the tables at the Wolfgang Puck restaurant in Manhattan. Okay. Again, if you can't see the difference between Joe Philbin and Mike McDaniel or Adam Gase and Mike McDaniel, then you're bitching for the sake of bitching. I understand the trepidation that you're alarmed about hiring another first-time head coach. I get it. But at least do your fucking research. This not a leader of men garbage, this He's another Adam Gase. I see another Adam Gase. Under what circumstance? That he's never been a head coach before? Let me tell you guys a little secret. Jim Harbaugh was never coming to Miami. No matter how much you wished it into existence, it was not happening. That rumor started that was never had legs from the moment Flores was happening, despite the fact that Stephen Ross put it in bold, plot, bold font letters, it's not happening, I, and I don't trust Stephen Ross. His reputation is dog shit, especially now. But that's the one thing I believed him on, that he wasn't poaching his Harbaugh from Michigan. And guess what? Where's Jim Harbaugh at now? Staying at Michigan. But, like I said, you guys are going to hang McDaniel because he's not Jim Harbaugh. Sean Payton is not happening either, guys. Okay? We were going to get ourselves another coordinator, the only hope is that they do their diligence and get the right one this time. And I had my reservations about every single, you know, first-time coach they brought in. And I'm going to include Cam Cameron in that mix because, yeah, he was a head coach at Indiana in college. Not a very good one. And that was my big hang-up. But he was a head coach before. The college to pro jump seldom works out. But as a first-time head coach, coordinator, my trepidations about him was he sucked at Indiana. You know, we went from a successful college coach to a lousy one. Um, Tony Sperano, God bless his soul. This is a guy who really, I, I, he was an offensive line coach who basically, and I don't mean to disrespect, disrespect Sperano here. I don't. But... Bill Parcells called the shots there. Sperano sort of was under the learning tree of him, but that was Parcells' ballgame. Sperano was sort of soaking it all in. 
I already said about Joe Philbin. He never, he basically set the tables, as I said before, at the Wolfgang Puck restaurant in Manhattan, or in that case, Green Bay. Adam Gase, horrendously overblown reputation because of Peyton Manning. McDaniel has been around the league. McDaniel has called multiple facets, and the results have shown from multiple players, and I'm not talking about Peyton fucking Manning, who is already an established Hall of Fame icon legend. I think he can do good things here. Very good things. And if the re- if the speculation that this guy could be the next Sean McVay or even better, this is a home run hire. And look, Chris Greer, say what you will about him, he knows he has to get this hire right because if he doesn't, he's not getting another chance. Okay? This is head coaching hire number three for him. Didn't work out with Adam Gase. Didn't work out with Flores. He's not going to get a chance to hire a third coach. This goes south, he's gone. So he's got to get this right, which is why he's doing his due diligence. So, you know, all this bullshit, he's not a leader of men. He, he's, he's, he looks like the guy at Geek Squad. Uh, uh, he's another Philbin. He's another Gase. He's another Yes Man. Get the fuck out of here. Look at the body of work. Take some time out before you type your garbage on Twitter. And do some research on what this guy has done in the past. And it's not like he doesn't have some hiccups. And I know that's one thing people are going to bring up is what happened that caused him to lose a job in his past. Yes, he had alcoholism. But guess what? He pulled himself up from the ground up. He grabbed his bootstraps and he made improvements as a human being. He realized he hit rock bottom. And he's not touched a drop of alcohol since. That's a man right there. So, Mike McDaniel seems to be the guy, and I'm actually excited for it. Was he my first choice right off the bat? Not really. I wanted Brian Dayball because of what he did with Josh Allen in Buffalo, because of his familiarity with Tua. But the more I think about it, the more I'm stoked for McDaniel. I mean, it was to me, it was Dayball 1, McDaniel 1A. that's my video guys again Mike McDaniel more likely than not going to be the next coach of the Miami Dolphins um and I'm stoked I'm looking forward to seeing what's next anyway that's it I'll talk to you guys soon